was announced that Mendeecees was getting eight years for drug trafficking. Yeah. Uh, do you know Mendeecees? I met him. I met him. He's cool. Well, what's your take about on the situation? He did what he had to do. Took his eight. You know what I mean? I think eight is good for the you know for what he was facing. Eight years is definitely good. And I think he did like probably like a year or something, year and a half. So he probably only have to do seven. And he in the Fed, so he got to do most of that time. And it is what it is, man. You you know your you know your consequence. You got to accept your life. You know what I mean? You knew you was doing dirt or whatever it might be. You know that you could get this type of time. And from what they accused him of, you know what I mean? He could have got twenty. He could have got thirty. You know what I mean? So it's like eight years is great. You know what I mean? And it's cool. He ain't tell. It's great. What was he? What was he facing? Well, okay, so he was facing forty years in prison. Here we go. I just looked it up. Yeah. He was facing 40 years. And Mendeecees, yeah, he's 36 years old. So he was potentially looking at getting out at 76 years old. And that's why people snitch. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I interviewed uh, Freeway Ricky, mm -hmm. who was one of the biggest drug dealers uh, in America. And uh, what he told me was that you saw the shift in the drug game when the RICO laws came around. Ronald Reagan, the news, the police, they all needed a bad guy. Right. Who was the undesirables? The blacks. The guys we don't need, they're unemployed. They, they're killing each other. They, they would see a gang shooting. A, a, a guy might have killed a, the guy with a girl. Or oh, was drug related, because he was a gang member. Right. So they took all these things and started to add them up in order to get the support of our black leaders to allow them to pass these laws that the guy who wrote the law, you see him, he's on the documentary, he said the guys are in jail decades. I want to look into some stuff on Freeway Ricky Ross, man. I, I keep hearing that he was an informant. Well, I heard that he actually informed on police officers. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that also, but I gotta like, I gotta really see. Cause you know, I interviewed him also on tax season. So I didn't like, prior to that, I didn't really have any knowledge of him being an informant because I wouldn't have had him on the show. But um, I definitely gotta, I wanna look into that. Cause I, I like, I like, I like his character. I met him, he's cool, but I need to, I need to do that. Cause if he did, I'm gonna delete the episode. Wait, so, so you feel that if you turn in a crooked cop, that snitching? Well, not really, because I actually had a crooked cop that was robbing me. And I had to like, I, I couldn't take it no more because it was like every time I came out the house, this dude was booking me, like putting me on the wall, running my pockets. Like, what, what you going to do? You want to go in and he'll pull out some crack like, like you going to take this or you going you gonna to take that? And it just got out of hand. Like, I think I was going on a date with a chick one day and he caught me slipping. Jumped out on me by the liquor store and did the shit. And after that, I was like, yo, fuck that. I called Internal Affairs. Internal Affairs said that they don't take care of that. I had to call like the Civilian Complaint Review Board or something. No matter of fact, Internal Affairs does deal with that, with money. That's what it was. I had called the Civilian Complaint Review Board first. And they was like, you got to call Internal Affairs. They deal with anything that got to do with money. And I, and I did that to him because I couldn't take it no more. And I'm like, you a cop. And I can't beef with you the way I want to beef with another dude. If another dude in the street did that to me, his head would be smoking. You know what I mean? So from your point of view, it's okay to tell them the police. Yeah, fuck the police. Tell on them niggas. Tell on all them. Tell on all the motherfuckers. Tell on them. Make up some shit about the police. Go ahead. Go kill somebody and say the cops did it. We just decided like, fuck it, you know? When we was able to see each other face to face on some grown man shit, it was like, you know, I ain't got no beef, I don't have no problem, you ain't got no problem, fuck it. And that's just what it was. Stripping, getting my own money and leaving. How was I gonna leave if I only made $200 every week? Ain't no way. So basically stripping saved your life? Yeah, you know what, it really did though. 